Hey, welcome back to part three of the update. We're going to check on some of the annual veggies right now. And uh, keep in mind, I did the pond, I did a whole bunch of side projects this year. So I kind of knew the annual veggies were going to be um, a little hit and miss this year. For example, last year I did, I think, but it was between 75 and 80 tomato plants. And this year I did about 20 to 25. Um, so I'm not going to have the production that I did last year, but it's actually, surprisingly, pretty good. Stick around. So we've also been picking uh, a bunch of tomatoes every day. Um, I'll go show you some of the better plants, my favorite, most productive plants, and um, use that as kind of, you know, permaculture's listening to the land, observation, and accepting the feedback. So it's really important that you notice what plants do well and then try to figure out why they're doing that well. All right, so some of the best tomatoes actually this year are these plants right here, just uphill of the wetland filter in this kind of dead soil. Um, some of these plants growing on this hill, it's a south facing hill, so it kind of seems like a pretty good place for tomatoes. And one in particular has been giving me a ton. And then this fig, got a couple figs here growing, so that'll be fun to try. I hope, I hope it lasts. I wonder, I thought I had two. I wonder if anyone fell. I don't think so. So this plant here in particular has been doing really well. Probably already got 10 or 12 potato, or tomatoes off of it. It got nailed by the hornworms and they're still doing all right. I pulled about maybe six off it this morning and it's not looking good. It's almost done, but that's all right. The hornworms got a snack and I still got tons and tons of food. And then this here are the black crim tomatoes. And these are some monsters. Like these aren't even done yet. And these will end up um, almost twice as big as this. And these are just great for sauces. They have a little smoky, a smoky aftertaste. And th this is the um, third year that I've done these now. So this is kind of selecting the best uh, tomatoes of each year so that one did pretty good so i'm probably going to save some seed from that one and then i'm kind of making my own land race of potato of uh tomatoes and then this butternut squash has gone crazy there's actually two of them here one up here has done really well some signs of yellowing um, but it's uh, probably put on three or four already and it's it probably will do some more. This one down here is even better. It's got about um, 10 on it now and then a bunch of flowers coming and I've already picked four of them and some of them are just gigantic. There's one sitting down here in the grass right now. It's funny, most people put flowers around their ponds and I'm putting squash. So we've got this. I just wanted it to kind of leap down this hill and do whatever it wants. I figured maybe it would shade the grass out. I was hoping it would be a little thicker, um, but it's done all right. And it's put, a, it's you know, gonna put a ton of uh, squash on and there's, you know, there's a lot more coming. So, a whole bunch of them in there. More flowers. So this thing's doing really, really well. And then here's the waterfall zucchini plant that has the squash borers in the vine and I thought I'd be done with getting zucchinis off this thing. Um, but since the last one I've pulled another four off, I've got a couple more coming. So this thing, this thing is like not giving up. Look at this. I don't even know how it's getting nutrient down into there. Like, this thing is just decimated. 
but somehow it's still producing so that's pretty awesome like look at this stem this is the stem of that zucchini plant it's basically like non-existent somehow it's still getting nutrient down to make zucchini though I should probably clean up some of that algae put it in the compost I think I'll probably do that after this video but I do like to show you guys what stuff looks like when it's not perfectly maintained as well I think that's really important um, the pond itself is doing pretty good this waterfall area some of the algae ends up flowing down here and collecting it's a great collection spot for me though and then I think over the years it'll get easier oh look at this we got elderberries elderberries now these you're not supposed to eat raw I'll have a couple the problem is that there's a oh that's so nice there's a uh, chemical in here that will build up in your liver and will give you an upset stomach it's not hyper poisonous it's just something you shouldn't just you know take a whole thing and every day be foraging off of it a little bit here and there is good it's really good to boil this um, and make a syrup with it it's actually like medicinal it's very medicinal and right next to it is the tomato and watermelon and this has been doing amazing all right so just stepping back this thing you know it has been really kicking butt this is a south facing hill it gets plenty of sun i think the thermal mass of the rock they really really like that so these cold days that we've had lately um, it's a little warmer and the super hot days it's a little cooler so it's kind of perfect actually this is a really good lesson to learn that i can pass on to you guys this thermal mass is so important to moderate temperatures and keep the plants in like that greenhouse constant temperature condition that they really like and this plant has gone bonkers this thing is loaded up with tomatoes everywhere and I've been pulling tomatoes off of this one plant you know there's more it's really hard to get to actually show you guys just how loaded this plant is more there there's more down here it's sprawling out and pushing further and further out we've got some beans next to it this thing has probably put on at least 20 so far and I bet you there's another 20 on there now is that normal like that's not normal I've never had a plant do that well and it's even up here like this is all coming from the same plant so I normally prune I trellis and prune but this one I just let sprawl and be a tomato plant however it wanted to and it has been ridiculous a little bit of signs of fusarium um, wilt so I'll just kind of try to pull those off ideally you don't do it with one hand because you don't want you don't want these leaves to brush up against other leaves while you're pulling them off but you just stay ahead of it pull that off it's a fungal disease so you don't want the spores going everywhere you just stay ahead of it and it'll more will get it but that's okay this thing will have no problem putting a ton of tomatoes on and you can see the um, watermelon hiding under there so the watermelon plant is sprawling itself all the way down it's a little further behind I mean it put on that one really big watermelon but it's kind of sprawling down I moved it so it's it's looking a bit weird and oddly oddly angled that's that's why I was trying to go uphill I just let it kind of run down here maybe it'll shade out some of the crabgrass that I'm pulling so a couple things about all this this hill is actually insanely pro uh, productive for some reason I know this so the soil is really garbage so as I build it over the years you know that soil will get really really good that thermal mass of moderation from these rocks back here I think really helps south facing hill helps so because this area is so good and it's actually nice to be around which is an important thing I think I'm going to do a lot of my annuals actually on the side of this hill um, in the future. I have up this way, I have a kitchen garden, and then down in the lower area down here, I have uh, the wild, crazy garden 
that wild crazy garden we're going to turn it into a perennial system i'll put bushes and stuff in there because i don't go down there as often so it'll kind of be better laid out to perennials and then annuals i want in an area that i want to be around constantly so now that i put this pond in i don't want to be walking so far away i want to be spending time around it so i'll do my gardening around it wildflower hill is doing pretty great it's kind of nice to see it This lower area here with the pawpaw trees, um, kind of let it get a little bit wild, so I came down and mowed uh, a couple days ago. So the pawpaw stand is doing pretty good. About the same as always, they're pretty slow. I kind of send you updates of growing trees, which is kind of, kind of comical because trees grow pretty slow. We've got the weeping willow here that we can use bamboo in the future. It's kind of a low settling area. There's a little micro indentation here that's a little lower. So um, the willow will probably like that and slurp up all that excess water and the snow melts. Okay, and then we've got the wild crazy garden here. This peach still doing amazing. This one's actually out of peaches. So we're finally um, done peaches on that one. It actually only had a couple on it. And um, the actual garden here um, i found the area where the colt's foot is kind of coming into the path i have no issues with weeds really um, and then i oh look at that i left my pruners here i was harvesting um i was harvesting squash so i like to kind of prune them off instead of yank them off the vine because you can do damage to the vine if you just yank but uh, i actually removed some of it and put a little walking trail through there all right so maybe we'll put some on this swale here so this is the lower swale this was kind of the first one that i did this is the one that has the comfrey wall which is back and kicking it doing really really well and keeping those grasses from creeping in and here's the colt's foot chop and drop that i was talking about in that lower area so we've got an area here um, that doesn't have the comfrey wall built up quite yet so it's right this is the swale right here. Doesn't have that comfrey wall built up yet. I've spread some out so you can see some of it popping up. So this will have tons of comfrey in the future, but for now, we're just gonna smother it and feed the soil with some chop and drop of that cold sweat. And just uphill of that, we've got the strawberry patch. So just jump up on the swale here and we've actually got some strawberries coming in i pulled in about a pint of strawberries back up and some of these ones on the edge are starting to produce again like that's a perfect strawberry right there so we've got a whole bunch more coming that's kind of always exciting when they when they start producing again and you can just kind of fluff them aside and you can see some, some buds starting to grow there, some flowers. So we're going to get back into strawberry season. It's really nice to have a diverse set of fruit so that you've always got something coming. Now you can see right at the base of this little baby apple tree, I've been putting daikon radish and strawberry some comfrey um, here's some daikon here these little seed pods are edible and they're quite good they're really good in a salad they taste like a, well, like tastes like a radish and look we got we got some strawberries so thanks for watching this update video um, I just wanted to take a moment at the end of the video to just thank all my subscribers and viewers the people who are still watching right now and then we'll go from this to leave a comment in the section um, below. You guys, um, like, I, it's not a YouTuber talking. I'm just a dude who gardens and takes his phone out once in a while and makes videos. Um, you guys really touch me and you move me. And I just love seeing your projects. I love, um, I love the feedback that you guys give in the comment section. It's really, really high quality. And if you're just watching my videos and you're not reading, some of the expertise from the people who watch this kind of permaculture science style video you're missing out because some of the 
watchers, some of my subscribers know more than I do. So thanks for watching and just a, a heartfelt thanks from one guy to someone else across the planet. Um, you really do make this a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. One last thing before I go. Coming up next is going to be a video about this right here. Sea buckthorn. And it's one of my favorite videos that I've ever made because it's one of my favorite plants that I have in my food forest. And I, it'll come right after this uh, video that you're watching and I know that because I've already made it. So stick around 24 hours from when this video gets released. The Sea Buckthorn video will be there. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on the next one.